Uh, hi Atul. Uh, how Hello. are you? I'm good. I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good as well. Um, so why don't you start by your in, with your introduction? So give us a brief introduction about yourself. Um, and what's your gate score, gate rank? Yeah, let's start with that. So I'm Atul Velgapodi. I completed my B.Tech in computer science from JNTUH, Hyderabad. Then I went to pursue my master's in Blackening Institute of Technology in Sweden. Mm -hmm. And right now I scored an all India rank of 24. And my score is around 882. Uh, That's how basically, basically my introduction is that. Okay. So you gave, uh, so why did you decide to give gate? Like you were already doing, you were already doing masters in Sweden. Uh, Then why did you decide to give gate? The actually thing was I graduated in March 2023. Mm-hmm. Then I started to search for jobs. So okay. fortunately, I didn't get any jobs. <laughs> okay, why and, is that fortunately? <laughs> and here I am with an all in the rank of 24. <laughs> so it turns out it, in the end it somehow worked out. Mm-hmm. So then I never had plans to give gate or anything. I didn't even know that I could get opportunities from giving the gate. Okay. Because my bachelor's and master's program was an integrated course. Mm-hmm. So it was pretty much decided in, in my B.Tech first year that I'm going to go abroad. Okay. So I didn't really know about GATE or anything. Oh. Until until August 2023. Okay. One of my friends was like, maybe you can give a try for GATE and apply for IITs. Because it's, it's already been around six months and I was jobless. Okay. So the main then I was like, yeah, was yeah, that you did not have a that job. That was in... my second second priority at that time. Okay. Then I I started researching about gate and all. Mm-hmm. I guess within two three weeks, uh, I used to follow a YouTuber called Krishnaid. Okay. Um, for machine learning tutorials and all, uh-huh. he posted on his LinkedIn that gate is also introducing a data science paper. Okay. Then I got interested in it. Then then I started for applying gate and starting prepare, preparation for the gate. Okay. So what's your background in BTEC? What branch did you do? My with? background was computer science. Okay. So why not computer science and why gate in DA? Uh, as I started realizing I should give gate, uh, I guess the limited amount of time which I had was around five months. Uh-huh. And people for gate CSE, people prepare for more than five months or five or six months. Okay. So then I got to know about data science and I was re- pretty much interested into data science too. Mm-hmm. And it was a new paper. Everyone yeah. was as clueless as I was at back then. So okay. I thought I would have a pretty decent chance. <laughs> okay. So I took the game. That's some smart thinking you did. Uh... <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. So... so everyone was worried about the uncertainty, but in the end it made me write the gate exam. Yeah. Okay. That's great. So basically not having a job for six months landed yeah. you an AIR or 24, is it? <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's great. So you said you thought about giving it in August 2023. And from yeah. there, you started preparation. So you started preparation the same month? Uh, no, the application and all were at the August end, probably. Then yeah. I start, started my preparation in the month of September, the first or second week of September. Okay. Because I was in Sweden back then and I was applying for jobs. Mm-hmm. Then I thought of coming back to India and start preparation for preparing seriously. So okay. I came back to India in September and I started preparing for gate exam. Okay, so from September to January and Feb, you prepared for the gate. Yeah. Okay, so only five months, that's five months, right? September, October, November. Yeah. That's just five months and you got an AI or 24. Yeah. So, so what's your secret of success? I would say that I did my bachelor's and master's in computer science. Mm-hmm. Half of my subjects were uh, already the subjects which were in my bachelor's and master's too. I was okay. familiar with those subjects. Okay. So that ha- that made me pursue this too. Okay. I had a background, so I was clear, pretty much clear that maybe I can, I have a good chance. Okay. So I would say my bachelor's and B.Tech helped me over there. Okay. So if we have to talk about your preparation for five months, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. how will you, like month-wise, month-wise, you will tell us about your preparation strategy. Like 
was there a specific strategy that you followed so so i was clueless about gate so okay. i just started watching youtube videos there how would a person starting in the month of jan prepare for gate okay i found out few videos that uh, people who are serious complete their uh, preparation or complete the syllabus in the month of november so i just mm-hmm. had that in my mind that maybe i should complete my syllabus till the month of november as much okay. as possible and start okay. giving mock tests and all okay. so there wasn't any monthly strategy or not i was just studying with the flow till okay. my goal was to just complete the syllabus as fast as i can okay so then start um, giving the mock tests okay from september october november three months was enough for you to complete the syllabus for gate da i feel like it was enough for me because mm-hmm. i had a computer That's science background background yeah 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 and what about the subjects in machine learning and ai yeah i took an optional course for ai and machine learning in my uh, B- btech yeah. okay the syllabus was kind of similar so okay. i had the background for those two okay and i, I was decent in maths so okay. i could just pick it up so because i am getting a feeling that you were a very good student in your btech as well is that true and that isn't true i had many back- backlogs in my btech too oh seriously so, yeah so yeah you were saying that you had backlogs in yeah, your yeah i'm uh... i'm not that good at uh, academics to be honest i oh. had a backlog and i even skipped many of my thesis submission in my masters or assignment submissions too okay so what was your cgpa in btech it was around 7.3 i guess okay so that's not bad yeah. that's a good cgpa uh, uh, yeah i'm not that good i'm just a decent uh, student okay. uh, that's what okay. i wanted to make we it we can here. call you an average student yeah. 7.2 is an average student okay yeah, yeah. so being an average student in 3 months you were able to prepare the whole course for gate year yeah so in your that's opinion what do you think that gate year syllabus is very easy or it's very limited what so when you look at the syllabus in august what was your feel about it like okay this is doable in 3 or 4 months or did you think that oh this is too much i might not be able to complete the syllabus in 3 to 4 months uh, when i saw the syllabus i was familiar with every subject so i thought it was doable for someone mm-hmm. coming from a different background would feel that it would it might be a little bit difficult okay so but personally i felt that it it's pretty much doable in 4 months if you have a background in okay. those subjects okay okay so because you were from a csc background for you yeah. felt for you it specifically it felt like okay 3 to 4 months is a very good enough time yeah it is completing the whole syllabus and yes. uh, a person who is not from a csc background might find it difficult to cover it in 3 to 4 months yeah that's how i see it okay okay yeah. so while you were preparing for example one subject what was your strategy did you try solving pyqs topic wise or uh, did you solve pyqs is my first question so i just i just wanted to complete the syllabus as fast as i could okay. so i just started uh, uh, reading for one or two months i didn't touch any pyqs or anything uh-huh. but i took a uh, what is a coaching institute all a course okay. they used to provide me dpp so i used to solve those dpps what is gdp daily practice problems a daily practice yes yeah they okay. used to daily provide practice. few questions so i used to just complete those questions and just okay. keep studying from youtube or their course okay or whichever material i get online nptel would be a good suggestion too okay so nptel so which my main open... focus yeah, yeah nptel which is open source okay. i did m- most of my machine learning and uh, ai from nptel oh most of the machine learning and ai you did from nptel nptel and course what were the other resources that you followed for your preparation i use youtube uh, and the co- uh, coaching institute course too for okay. for my preparation youtube and YouTube was most of the part, I would say. Okay. Okay. YouTube did so, most most of the. So you're saying that mostly open source, whatever was available openly on YouTube, was sufficient for you to do the preparation for Gate DA. Yes, I would. I would suggest that. Okay. Actually, I joined a Telegram group too, where people would discuss that this specific material is good and this content is really good. Okay. So then okay. I started preparing it from there. 
there most okay. of it was open sourced okay so talking specifically about the mlai part yes so do you think that there is a one stop resource available already for ml and ai if somebody wants to study ml and ai do we have like a one place channel or some place where you can find all the re relevant resources or you had to you know go to multiple channels and read specific topic from somewhere and some other topic from somewhere so what i felt is that for artificial intelligence uh, the nptel course by professor mossam okay. uh, it from a to z it's pretty good uh -huh. it tells you everything in that okay. and for machine learning i just because uh, i knew few of my topics on my own mm -hmm. so i just googled uh, the topics which are hard for me i can't tell you a specific resource for, but for ai that nptel course really helps so professor mossam if i'm not wrong is from iit delhi yes yeah his right? iit delhi okay. yeah but for machine learning there is no one such resource that a person can follow and uh, which i f i couldn't find any you couldn't no find one any. yeah so actually this is something that i have also faced um when mm. we were studying in isc so i was not aware of machine learning before i entered isc mm. and once we entered isc i got to know okay there is something called machine learning and data science but even though i took a course it was very difficult to find like one resource even you know i could not refer only one professor for from nptel or anywhere else that could give me you know information on all the topics so what i felt for machine learning was the information is very scattered and there is no one place i can just go and refer everything from mm, yeah machine learning is kind of like that yeah which i feel but um, what is the thought about the other subjects that we have in gate dl syllabus for example say linear algebra and probability i feel that uh, i picked it up from my bachelor's Okay. The linear algebra and uh, probability statistics. Mm -hmm. I was fortunate enough to get good lectures in my college too. What about DBMS? Um, DBMS too. I picked it up from NPTEL lectures. Okay. And for Python programming, as I had my bachelor's and master's, so I was good at Python programming. Okay. So I can see that you referred multiple places to complete yes. the whole gate DA syllabus. would you recommend this strategy for the future aspirants that uh... i don't think i would suggest the strategy for future why is that because uh, the, uh, the more i was researching i was losing time mm -hmm. maybe now right now they could try it out because mm -hmm. they have a lot more time uh, like they have in a year yeah. but if they were in my shoes i don't think that this this is the best strategy to do if somebody is who is starting from august you will not trick me you know going to multiple places and mm. um trying thing uh, like mm. i would say that because the gate in, uh, was introduced in was the first paper this is uh, this is my process my process to tackle it okay but uh, i would suggest if there is possibility for them like mm. they would get all the resources at one point i prefer them to use that okay uh, at least to get this uh, what do you say to complete their portion okay to to complete the study part they mm, should yes. refer to somebody who's or some place somebody where they all, could they can get yeah they can get the all, all resources mm. and so they don't have yes. to search through and research about the uh, topics yes. and uh, the resources per se uh, and for the topics which are uh, they are not comfortable with those they could just search for those topics okay. like for any particular topic Okay. I would suggest that. Okay. So while you were preparing, you said that you specifically did not solve any previous year questions or PYQs. Uh, till November, I guess. After till that, November. I started solving PYQs and giving okay. few mock tests. And all. Okay. So your strategy, if we have to lay out, was that you first completed your theoretical portion completely, like yes. from August to November, you read everything that you could, and from November onwards, you started doing PYQs. Or I started or doing PYQs, yeah, PYQs and the mock tests which I could get. I just wanted to see uh, uh, different different types of models, okay, so that uh, that will explain me more about the concepts which I lag, okay, and so that I could improve on that. Okay, so uh, and then November after you started giving uh, mock tests. So how many mock tests did you give? 
I I gave around 40. I guess. 40 mock tests. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, it's not like I was giving the mock test for the complete three, uh, three hours. Okay. I just wanted to go through as many different types of questions I could, uh-huh. which would help help me to crack my exam. Okay. So I get I at least attempted 40 mock tests. Okay. Maybe. So more than to... 40 to be honest. <laughs> okay. So um so which of the mock tests did you find were most relevant to the gate DA syllabus or the gate DA standard? I will say that the A- AIOT which you guys provided uh, mm-hmm. gave the first one was pretty close to the final exam. Okay. No one could do a better job in that. Mm-hmm. as you guys could and uh, <laughs> only for machine learning i would say that okay you guys were the pretty the best resource i could find okay for the machine learning part yeah all, all your youtube uh, playlist questions and all that okay. really helped me for the machine learning okay so uh, so you took our aiot 1 and aiot 2 as well right yes i took both of them and i think you were rank 1 in our aiot 1 yeah and i got and aiot 2 if i'm not wrong it, your rank was something under 10 only though we never mm. revealed the ranks uh, yeah so so how was your experience with the aiot 2 actually the thing was when i was giving the aiot 2 mm-hmm. i had three all india tests on that day okay so i i was planning to just look at those questions for the all the three okay so i was giving the aiot to as a, my third exam so okay. i was pretty burned out by then oh and then also <laughs> you did so well that you were under 10 in our i AIOT. guess that exam was pretty hard so the bar was reduced or <laughs> something like that would have happened <laughs> so but if you have to talk about the experience specifically of the aiot's uh, specifically of aiot 2 uh do you feel that it helped you in the exam because you had already seen the worst yeah it it pretty much solved all of my uh, nightmares and took it away with it <laughs> no, so the I... uh, after facing aot 2 what i took is that if you face a, a few series of hard problems mm-hmm. you shouldn't be demotivated the easier problem will uh, problems will come after uh, the hard ones Mm. which would get you the rank it's not uh, the hard problems which will get you the rank but yeah. rather the easy problems which you can score without making any silly mistakes okay will help you in achieving a decent rank okay or decent score that's a very good advice i think no nobody yeah. has put it like that but you should focus on the easier uh, questions and yeah and because whatever is hard is actually hard for everyone mm. so you should try to make not make silly mistakes in the easier questions because that's something that people will be getting very easily so you should not be making silly mistakes there and uh, if you can solve hard questions that's good even if you're not that's fine right but um but how do you how will you say that okay suppose that a gate exam is happening and you get something like an ai ot2 so uh, um, what do you what, suggest or what would what i would feel is that uh if you spend a decent Im- amount of time in your preparation hmm. then if it's hard for you then it's it would be hard for ar 1 2 to okay. solve that paper mm-hmm. so just give your best and come out of that exam don't think that if you scored an 80 or 70 marks in a easier paper yeah you have to score 70 and 80 in the hard paper too the ranks are relative so you are just competing with the relative person not to get 100 out of 100 so just yeah. give your best and don't make any silly mistakes come out of it you will do good so i want to stress on this so i actually got a lot, a lot of questions before the gate d exam that mm. ma'am can i you know uh, the paper is going to be easy because you know uh, this is happening for the very first time so if i score from 50 to 60 is it okay to qualify mm-hmm. <laughs> So I was getting a lot of questions like that, and uh, I did I did explain the same thing as you did that okay, it's, mm. first of all it's relative. If the paper is easy, everybody is gonna solve. So seventy to sixty or fifty to sixty is not the right strategy to go for. You should yes. actually focus on maximizing your score, no matter what what the paper is, and because everybody else will be doing that. So I don't know why students True. have this notion. 
that uh, can we score 50 to 60 and then you know is this is a good strategy to you know target 60 marks in the paper what i feel is that uh, looking at all the gate exams mm. in the previous years yeah. uh, they had set a certain standard that 30 would be a good cutoff or 65 would be a good cutoff yeah so i didn't have this gate background and all so i feel it okay. in this way but what i feel is that most of the people who are attending the gate exam mm. know all the previous year cutoffs and how much should they score to get a better rank and all Okay. So that place in back of their, their mind, I guess, that they should score 65 or not. Okay. That okay. might be the reason behind it. Behind that. But that's completely mm. wrong strategy to go for. Mm, yeah, it is. Because uh, if the paper is easy and you are still targeting 60 marks, somebody will be there who is scoring 90. True. And then your rank is gone. True, true. So I want to stress here that uh, who's a, so students who think that it's a good strategy to fix a number of marks that they want to score in an, any gate exam. Uh, so every year the paper keeps on shuffling. Uh, the standard of the paper also changes. So rather than setting a benchmark or a marker that, okay, I should be scoring 60 or a 70, you should try to maximize your strategy or your maximize your score in the exam. And also one more thing that you said, you should avoid silly mistakes. Yes. So if you're talking about silly mistakes, did you make any silly mistakes in the gate exam? I, I did many silly mistakes in my gate exam. Okay. As you gave 40 mock tests. So was yeah. your was there an strategy around giving the mock test? Like, okay, once I give once you give the mock test, uh, how did you evaluate those mock tests and how did you improvise on your strategy? Or what exactly uh did you do after you gave a mock test and the result was out yeah i used to give my mock test uh, at 9 30 the most of the days 9 30 in the morning and Why i used that? to analyze uh because my gate exam was from 9 30 to 12 30 okay so i just wanted to get used to it that every day 9 30 i should be giving an exam or some so okay. then i started giving my exam at 9 30 i used to finish around 11 30 12 Okay. Then I used to analyze all the mistakes which I had done in that exam mm -hmm. and feel happy that I'm doing these mistakes in mock tests, not in the real one. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> then I started analyzing, uh, take, uh, taking notes of which topics I'm going wrong most of the mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. and on which topics I could do more silly mistakes. Okay. I had most of my silly mistake in calculation. So I got to know that I'm not calculating the problems accurately. Okay. So I started picking up my mistakes and trying to improve on that. Okay. So two... all of my mocks test was for that and to okay. uh, get different, different types of questions, like different models. Okay. To get used to uh, answering different, different types of models, model questions. Okay. What do you mean by different model questions? Like few questions. Uh, you get used to solving the questions. Uh, what do I say? There is a bit tricky questions. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, if you start uh, solving those tricky questions, your mind gets tuned to it. Like right. whenever you see a question, uh, your thought process or something, it just uh, clicks in your mind at that right. instant. Okay. So I just wanted to see different different types of questions. Okay. So which would help me to solve a tricky question. Okay. So basically a mix of tricky easy and yeah. medium questions so that you don't you don't train your mind specifically to train to solve tricky questions because yeah. if you do get an easy question in the exam uh, it should not be like your brain is trying to look for a trick in it and it's not able to solve yeah. the easy question that's a very exactly. good strategy like, I, think. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a very good strategy that you should try out different questions starting from medium to hard level and train your mind to be not, uh, you know, become receptive of only one type of question. Yes. That's a very good strategy. So, so I think three points you made here, which were very important. Uh, and I would like to summarize that. One thing that you said that is you scheduled your mock test at 9.30 a.m., which was also the time where your actual gate exam was supposed to be there. Uh, and mainly, I think you did it because uh, you wanted to train your mind to be active in that particular period of time, right? Yeah. Period of the day. Uh, 
another thing that you did said was that you analyzed your mock test and you realized that you were making a lot of calculation mistakes and um, yes. and that's what you tried to pick up on and uh, you were careful in your next mock test that you should not make any calculation mistake and also the third thing that you mentioned is that you try to solve as many as different variety of questions yep. so that your brain doesn't focus on only you know a particular type of question for example if you are only solving tricky questions your brain starts to look for trick in every question yep. that's what you want to avoid yeah yeah i think that's a very good strategy um okay so um when you said that so one thing is when you analyze your mock test you realize that you were making a lot of silly mistakes or calculation mistakes what did you do if you made uh, if you were not able to attempt a particular question or you made a mistake in a question which was not a calculation mistake so i would uh, learn how to solve that question okay and try to adapt that thinking process which would be helpful me to solve the similar kind of questions okay. i used to note down all those questions like here is how uh, where you miss this logic or topic and all okay then i used to keep revising it on um, m- not monthly or weekly whenever i used to get the time okay like whenever i came back to that subject mm-hmm. i used to keep revising those subjects again and again like it's it's in a cycle i used to give those mock tests and okay. i used to start again uh, revising from the math uh, dbms okay. machine learning and all i used to do it in a round robin way mm-hmm. when i used to uh revise those subjects i used to revise these questions too okay like this is where you go wrong karke okay so your approach was very question centric or it was a topic centric approach like, it was a mix of both i it would was say it was both okay mm. so for example if you got a question wrong in say particular topic for example svm so mm-hmm. uh, would you go back and revise the whole svm or you would try to understand what you did not understand in the svm or you would actually yeah. just focus on the question that okay where am i going wrong no i would just uh, try to revise that uh, topic i would say okay uh, and then move on for example in decision tree i mm-hmm. used to get confused in the entropy calculating the entropy part and all okay so i, I used to revise that formula not okay. exactly the question but the formula the concept behind it okay so um, so while you were preparing for say 3 uh, to 4 months august to november september to november did you also prepare notes for whatever you were studying yeah i, I used to prepare my notes mm-hmm. uh, like all, almost all my notes were used to be consisted of the those particular mistakes which i would do okay so it's not uh, like i'm preparing notes for the whole topic okay it's rather only those topics which i am going wrong or which i would feel that this would be difficult or i would feel this might be hard for me only those topics i used to make separate notes like okay. the most important notes short notes you can okay. call that short okay. notes okay so at such for the whole syllabus you do not have a notes only for mm. the topics where you find that okay this is a difficult topic or a tricky topic or in mock test when you were making some mistakes and you figured out okay this is some question that i'm not able to solve and i lack understanding here that you will go back and write down in your notes yep. and you will keep on revising yes okay so how much time did you used to revise say every day uh the thing was that i didn't keep any time or okay. anything okay. i should uh, study for 8 hours when i was really in a mood and oh. i used to study for one or two hours when i'm not in a mood okay but i used to just keep uh, studying whenever i had time okay so if you have to you know take an average or say they say mean is not a good statistic mm-hmm. value you should take a <laughs> median median so value <laughs> so if you have to take a median number of hours that you spent every day on studying uh, what would that be it would be somewhere around 4 to 5 hours or 4 to 5 hours starting in september you spend like literally yeah. every day 4 to 5 hours daily 5 uh, hours for sure i guess 4 to 5 okay. hours yeah okay so how consistent you were throughout those 5 6 months of study in these 4 uh, to 5 hours like i was pretty much consistent like i used to 
study daily maybe okay. i used to at least for an hour or at least for 10 20 minutes at least okay. i used to revise mm-hmm. i just for uh, so that i would stay in that zone like okay. i'm preparing for something mm-hmm. and just keep reminding myself that why did i start or why did i start this gate journey mm-hmm. that helped me to stay motivated and stay consistent one more tip i would give is that start day dreaming okay that really helped me like um, imagine that you cracked a, a gate exam yeah and you are in a good college if you want to be in a good college or if you want to take a phd mm. start imagining imagining that life okay that will help you uh, stay motivated and want to do this more start enjoying the process would be the best step i would give okay so this is something i also followed uh, so for me uh, i started uh, dreaming about being in isc mm. and i had wallpaper of isc on my desktop and every day when i used to start my day i would see that wallpaper and i would think about it okay when i'll be standing in front of the main building uh, what will i feel like and when exactly. it actually got converted it was a very emotional moment for me because for three months when i studied and i was when i was eventually there it was altogether a very different feeling okay so we talked about pyqs uh, so th- a lot of material was available for uh, the subjects which were already there in gate csc yes. for example yes. uh, probability was there the data structures algorithms were there Um, calculus too calculus, calculus also you can mm-hmm. find very easily or not csc there are other uh, subjects uh, of gate where you can find the intersecting subject and you can find a lot of pyqs or say practice questions but specifically for ml and ai where did you get the questions to practice from as i already told you i took over 40 mock tests so yeah <laughs> that pretty much covered all my ml and okay. artificial intelligence part mm-hmm. and i also try to solve that nptl questions and ptl okay. assignment questions okay for ml and ai and youtube uh, youtube channels like depth of ml okay. most of my machine learning even i had that doubt that uh, for all the other subject i had pyqs but for mm-hmm. machine learning and ai there was no material for me okay. that's the main reason i started giving more and more mock tests okay. like even okay. those institutes would have their particular idea yeah about this question might be in the gate exam so i just wanted to solve all those machine learning and ai questions okay so your major resource for machine learning questions were youtube channels and the mock tests that you were giving and yes. you couldn't find and the nptl assignments yep i didn't have that time to research more so i just yeah. stick to it this one yeah i think this is one of the struggles that a lot of students faced last year and that's one of the reasons we started solving questions on our channel because we were getting a lot of queries okay i have studied the question i have studied the topic i don't know what kind of questions to expect or i have this question i don't know how to solve this because in the online videos they only tell us about the topic they don't solve questions for us or they don't tell how to solve the questions and specifically this was also a problem when we were studying in isc so mm-hmm. i remember i had taken a course in pds which is practical data science and uh, i couldn't find any resource where you know uh, there were questions being solved or mm. in general questions were there which you can look at or practice from and that was still true for like 6 years after i have taken that course mm. four to six years i have taken that course so that was one reason that we started solving questions and i thought that's and we thought that that's the need of the hour and that's why we should start solving the questions that is that pretty much helped me to in my machine learning journey too <laughs> to be honest so how did you find out about the depth of ml channel so i told you that i joined a telegram group yeah so there are people uh, the gate aspirants over there it's mm-hmm. like a community or so okay. everyone pitches their own idea like check out this channel or check out okay. this resources and all oh. that's how i got to know about the machine learning depth of ml okay Okay, so uh, asking specifically about depth of ML, um, what difference do you feel depth of ML content provides, or what is the difference between the content of depth of ML or say any other channel? I would say particularly in machine learning, mm-hmm. because you guys are from IIC, you mm-hmm. guys know uh, what would a IIT professor or IIC professor would ask in yeah. Gate. 
right so for machine learning and even for algebra and probability questions yeah i would find that this is the place where you should refer to right if not uh, purchasing the course uh, at least go to their uh, go through their channel mm mm-hmm. that would benefit you a lot <laughs> thank you thank you for that um so uh, did you also find some of the questions that were there in the avt was same as uh, you know in the gate day exam yeah not uh, not only those uh, particular question from gate ai avt yeah. i could also find the intuition in your uh, question series for machine right. learning and all right. that knn i guess that was from your question series first then right. it got into ai avt right so not only the tests but the videos too the videos test. help too so, it was pretty al- similar almost same question i would say yeah i think i when i saw that question it was with k is equals to 7 and with yeah. k is equals to 5 was that what was yeah. asked in gate yeah right. yeah okay so how many questions were there which were you know common in gate da ai ot and say whatever we were solving in a youtube channel as far as i remember maybe 3 to 5 questions were sim- kind of similar and that probability tossing a coin question Fine. too i think it was yes. exactly the same question yeah i didn't know how to solve those kind of question until i saw that paper oh okay that AI okay. so okay. i got benefited from that <laughs> <laughs> that's great that's what we have heard from some of the students who were following us continuously that mm-hmm. uh, those three four questions they were able to solve and they were able to gain marks for that mm. yeah and we feel very happy and proud about that i felt like i cheated or not but still <laughs> <laughs> no so it was available online for everyone uh, yeah <laughs> i got i just got lucky yeah i would say okay so enough on the preparation what are your future plans my future plans would be to get a good college mm-hmm. and keep giving my best that's it that's it that would be my future plan <laughs> that's amazing so <laughs> uh, is there a specific institute that you are targeting or a program that you are targeting i would like to go to the mtech research in iisc okay. mtech research or mtech ai probably mm-hmm. i'm i still didn't make any decision on that okay i would like isc and uh, iit madras okay maybe these two two institute would be my priority right now okay and why mtech research and not just mtech i j- i completed my masters already so mm-hmm. i had to go through a lot of coursework okay and i'm interested in research so i would like to try out mtech research okay So after you complete your masters what's your dream company or what's your dream job like My dream company right from my btech days were, was Google okay. so I hope I get into Google Okay The research which Google gives out that mm-hmm. was my motivation to get into research Okay too. So why not PhD then I might plan PhD too Okay so basically you want to go into a research profile even in the industry uh, yep okay do you plan to teach yeah i, I love teaching so maybe oh, maybe, awesome. maybe in future that's great so if you have to give say three tips or four or how many tips uh, to the future aspirants what will be those for you know gate da specifically and then in general uh, when you are studying say doing mtech or studying anything like you're doing your bachelor's or doing anything so let's first talk about gate exam and then in general if you want to give some tips from your personal experience coming to the gate exam if it's uh, related to the syllabus mm-hmm. just keep studying the syllabus a- as much as you can yeah don't uh, take stress about uh, the syllabus or everything just keep yeah. keep giving your best uh, complete your syllabus as fast as you can okay and devote the last one or two months for the tests uh, okay. and keep revising those hard topics okay that specific to this how to complete the syllabus and all the most important tip i would give is that start enjoying the process if you start and enjo- keep enjoying the process which you are doing that helps you stay motivated and consistent too mm-hmm. in the end uh, the knowledge which you acquired in this process would help you in your life rather than a gate score mm. that would be my best tip which i could give okay so you said uh, enjoy the thing that you are doing 
or uh, so that it can keep you motivated how does one make a thing enjoyable like studying usually people say it's so boring how do you make studying enjoyable for yourself i would say first ask yourself your questions that do you want to really study or not <laughs> it, it doesn't depend upon that you should only study yeah just try to find out your interests and okay. you will be uh what is you will win the life <laughs> that's a very good advice and in general like not say get uh in general if suppose you have to give an advice to somebody who's just starting with their btech and they want to succeed in life or they look up to you uh to become something good in their field what is that one piece of advice that you'll give to that future aspirant i would say the start asking a lot of questions like what do you want to become or how do you want to see yourself in 5 5 years mm mm-hmm. and have a backup plan having a backup plan will uh, help reduce the stress as mm-hmm. i was jobless for 6 months i needed a backup plan <laughs> that's why i took up the gate exam and somehow it worked out for me yeah so have at least one backup plan and okay. don't stress much okay enjoy the life and see where life takes you <laughs> that's a very good advice yeah so you talked about stress uh so there is one specific question that i want to ask everybody who has given gate d exam how did you manage stress in the gate examination hall so uh, coming to me as i gave the 40 mock tests mm-hmm. so i was already trained to be in exam situation for 40 times uh-huh. so that didn't feel quite stressful when i was uh, giving the actual gate exam okay i would say get used to those conditions and take it uh, take it that this is just an exam you yeah. have more chances yeah that's it that, that would do for the stress part cool it was uh, fun having you on our channel uh, anything you want to add now uh, at the end i would like to thank my parents and my sister for always supporting me yeah throughout this journey mm-hmm. uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity and all the one who is watching this interview all the best for future for your future